What's up, everybody? Mr. Olden, we're back for another math lesson. Wonderful. Great. Can't wait. Today's combining the volume of prisms. So we've been talking about finding the volume of a prism. Now we're going to talk about what happens when I have an object that's not a regular shaped figure. And that's going to entail splitting it into two or more regular figures and adding up what both volumes are. This lesson's going to be a little bit longer than normal because there's a little bit more work involved, and there's a couple different types of problems that I want you to check out. So please stick with me and watch all the examples for this. I picked out specifics to really um, pound in the differences or um, little things that I really want you to pay attention to. So we had this example this morning, well, two mornings ago now, uh, there's a three-dimensional figure. kind of looks like the foot to Voltron. If you don't know what Voltron is, get Netflix, watch it. Um, what I see here is an L-shaped figure. And I'm looking at it. And I also need my pointer. And I see, you know, L, whatever. And I can kind of picture it being two rectangles, like Legos or um, blocks that you're stacking. Think about when you were like three or four years old. And you, you, know, you were building stuff out of blocks, right? You put one on top of another. So what I have to do is I have to think about, well, how can I make two regular figures out of it? And the only way you could do that is by cutting it into two pieces. Now, what I did here was I extended the, um, the width. And you're always extending a line. Don't just draw them because it, it doesn't do anything. All right, You have to have a previous uh, dimension that you're extending through. That being said, so I did that. Let me show you what not to do. That was a width. You can't do this. First of all, the reason you can't draw that diagonal line that way is because now I have an angle shape. And I can't find the volume of this angle because you don't know how to find the area of a triangle yet. All right? So we're not going to do that. No drawing diagonal lines. And then you might say, well, Mr. Oldenborg, didn't you just draw a diagonal line when you did the width? Sure, kind of. But I was tracing along a um, dimension that's already there. The other thing is that's not the only way to cut it. You can cut it more than one way. I could have also cut it vertically, like a height. And that's the one we'll use. I also want you to make sure that you're labeling your... Um, objects because who's ever grading your paper is going to need to know where you're pulling these numbers from and what you're applying it to. So I said that I need a length, a width, and a height. Quick review. Lengths are always horizontal lines, widths are always diagonal lines, and heights are always vertical lines. And I need one of each that goes across the entire object, not a piece. So if you're going to notice if I'm looking at this, I see I have a 6 here, right? I can't use it because it's shared between the two objects, all right? Can, if I'm looking at shape A, I can only be concerned with this distance. Well, what is it? Well, it's 2. Just like this one's 4. And then if you add 4 and 2, what do you get? 6. I don't know if I can actually pick up objects. In class, you saw me draw a line, and I drew it right here, and then I was able to just grab that line and pull it here and pull it here, and you saw it was exactly the same. I can't do that with this program. I apologize. So here we go. I need a length, and my length is a horizontal line. That takes up all of A. I need a width. It's a diagonal line. That takes up the entire object. And a height from top to bottom. There you go. So I have 2 times 4 times 7. Now when I go to figure this out, I want easy numbers to work with. I don't want to do like 4 times 7, 28 times 2, because that's a little bit of work. If I look at 4 times 2, I know that's 8. And 8 times 7 is still another fact, 56. By the way, you should be doing that work on paper. I'm just doing my head for this. So for B, use the right color, Mr. O. I need another length, horizontal line. I need a width, a diagonal line, but I can't use that six, but I found one right here. Because remember, this shape 
is only concerned with here. It stops here because that becomes part of A. So I'm only concerned with this piece. And then finally, a vertical line, 2. So for B, I have 4 times 4 times 2. Now I don't want to do 16 times 2. I'll do 8 times 4. 8 times 4 is 32. So now I take both of these values. I take 56. I take 32. I combine them by adding. I'm getting 88. But my answer is not 88. That would be a terrible answer because I have units. I need to know what I'm talking about. They are centimeters, but they are not just centimeters because I am working with three dimensions because volume equals length times width times height. Things are in 3D, so it is to the third power. Let it sink in. And moving on. So here's another object similar to the last one. I'm going to make a line. I am going to separate it here because I want to get some sticks of butter. All right. I have an A unit. I have a B unit. Let's talk about it. Let's go back to A. I need a height. Hey, here's a height. And remember, it doesn't matter how you find it. Go with what you see first. A equals 12 times. Well, now I see my width right here. That takes up the whole unit. 9. And oh, well, there's the 4. Perfect. For B, I can't use this 10. I have a width I see of 9. Whoops. Now it looks like not equal. Let's pretend that's an equal sign. I have a height staring me right in the face. And I have a length of 6. Now, remember, I did not use this 10 because it's part of A and part of B. But if I look, if I take this section right here, I come up here, and then I go back there, it should be 6. And here to here to here is 4. 6 plus 4, 10. All right. Now I figure these out. Let me do the math. Uh, let's start with B because I'm on red. Uh, 63 times 6. Yuck, these are terrible numbers. Oh, man. All right, 63 times 6. 6 times 3 is 18. Regroup the 1. 6 times 6, 36 plus 1 is 37. Oh, this is so ugly. All right, let's do 12 times 4 because it's 48. 48 times 9, 72. 36 plus 7 is 43. 43. 432. I'm still talking like it's the rest of it. 810 meters to the third power. Remember, you need to combine and add and make sure your computation's good, guys. Show all work. <clears throat> so, the first day we were really considering just looking at finding uh, the right values because that's, that's a hard skill in itself. Remember, horizontal, vertical, diagonal. As long as you have one for each, you're good. So they just want to know what the length and width of A and B are. So A, can't use that 6 at the bottom, but I can use 12 for a height, 3 for a width, 4 for a length. So A equals 4 times 3 times 12. 4 times 3 is 12. Times 12 is 144, which is a gross. Just like kids. You're welcome. B, I need a length. 2. A height of 5. A width of 3. Is 5 times 3 times 2, which is 30. But they didn't ask me to solve it. They want to know another way I could have separated this figure. Okay. La, 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 la. I should get a racing music. I don't even put the other music on. Ready? If I extend it this way, I could have made two separate shapes as well. I would ignore this dotted line. And now I would actually use the 6 because for B, it would be 6 by 3 by 5. And for A, get a good color, 4 by 3 by 7. Let's see the shape. Whee! Always two ways to skin a cat. So I put this up because sometimes 
I mean, first of all, I'm gonna cut this into two shapes because why would I do triple the work? However, I wanna show you that you can have three different shapes that you're finding volumes for. You could have an A, a B, and a C and combine all. It's not always two. Sometimes it works that it's better that you do the two. I mean, uh, the three than the two, but not in most cases. Most cases just go with the two shapes. Less work is better work because there's less chance of making mistakes. So I'm gonna separate this shape right across here. I got a stick of butter and a, and a rectangle at the, rectangular prism at the bottom. Like what I went with that, huh? All right, A, we have a length of five, a width of, I don't know, and a height of five. Let's go find that length. If you remember, I told you, you could search all over the place. This line is the same as this line, is the same as this line, is the same as this line, is the same as this line. Same as this line. <gasps> Eight. B, I have a height of two, a length of seven, and a width of eight. So two, seven, eight. For B, <clears throat> I know seven times eight is 56. 56 times two, and yes, I could do it in my head, but I'm showing you should show all your work when things are not facts. 112, don't worry about the units till the end. Here, I have 25 times eight. Well, eight quarters, $2, 200. 200 plus 112. 312, 312 what? Centimeters cubed. This is going a lot faster than I thought it was going to because here's the final example. I put this on here for this great reason. You can't do that. That is bad because I have two triangles. Terrible, terrible. Don't do it. Try to stick to straight lines that aren't going to create confusion. I could cut this this way, or I could cut it this way. Either way is fine. Either way, you're going to give me two rectangular prisms. The other one would have given me a diagonal, which would have made another irregular shape, which is crazy. So choose one along the lines of one of your dimensions. It's the best advice I could give you. I am going to cut it here because this is where I like it. My brain says this is the right way to cut it. It's not the only way to cut it. It might not be the best way for you. You do what's good for you, and I will make sure that I grade it accordingly. But in the meantime, for the purpose of these examples, I'm going to do it my way. So for A, I need a length, width, and height. Oh, I have a length of 9. It's right there, plain and simple. I even have a height of 12. And look at that, connecting I have the 5. So A equals 12 times 9 times 5, and it doesn't matter the order at all. By the way, 12 times 5 is 60. 60 times 9, I don't even have to do it because I know 9 times 6 is 54, annex a 0 in the 1s. Pays to know your facts, pays to understand place value, makes things easier. Learn them, do them. Go on to extramath.org. Get those facts. Uh, all right, B. I have a height. That is 12, not 2. I cut off the picture. I apologize. How do you know, Mr. O? What if it was 2? Well, kids, this is the same as this. This is the same as this and this and that. Good way to check your work. My length is 4, and look at this. I have my... Uh, my width right there. And I'm not going to use 11. I, do you notice I keep hitting the right side of the screen? I don't know why. It's terrible. I can't use this 11. It's split into two. And when I look at B, B is this shape right here. Because it's cut right here. So I can't go past it. It's not going back any further anymore. By the way, 5 plus 6, 11. Amazing math. I know. So four times two times six. Well, four times two is eight. Eight times six is 48. 540 plus 48 
588 meters to the third power. Ladies and gentlemen, that's not even my longest video. I thought this was going to take forever. I hope you enjoyed it. Please, please keep watching these. And remember, studying is not just watching my videos. You need to be doing as well. Watch a problem, do a problem. I only cut these one way and did it. Cut it the other way, figure it out. Do the work, all right? Have a good one.